today I'm going to explain what Reynolds number is. Reynolds number is one of the key parameters in determining the flight of aircraft, along with Mach number and the cross section of the wing, which I won't discuss here. Reynolds number is so important because as long as you have the same Reynolds number when analyzing an aircraft, such as a wind tunnel test of a model, any characteristic of the flight you calculate in the test will be the same as in the actual use of the full-size aircraft. Again, as long as the Reynolds number is the same. As to what Reynolds number actually is, in a general sense, it describes how air flows around an object moving through that air. Since Reynolds number, which is often abbreviated with RE, is so important in aerospace calculations, these objects moving through the air are usually parts of an aircraft, often the wing in particular. Now in a specific sense, Reynolds number is the ratio of inertial forces to viscous forces. Before I continue on, I should explain what inertial and viscous forces are. Inertia is another word for momentum, which is a measure of an object's tendency to keep going in the direction it is currently going in. Momentum is why it is difficult to stop a rapidly moving object. As such, an inertial, or momentum-based, force is just a force that wants to keep the objects going in the direction they are currently going. In relation to airflow, this is just a tendency of the particles of air to keep going forward even after they bump into something, such as a wing. You can calculate the inertial force from the equation force, F sub i, equals one-half air density, rho, times the velocity, v squared, times the area, a sub i. One-half rho v squared is the dynamic pressure, which is a measure of energy per unit volume of air, i.e. how energetic a section of air is. We multiply this by the area that the air hits against to get how much energy is expended over a given distance. Energy expended over a given distance is just another way to describe force. In the case of aircraft, the area that the air bumps into is the area of the front part of the wing. Viscous forces, then, relate to the viscosity of the air. Viscosity is often described as a measure of how sticky a fluid, such as air, is. Another way of describing it is that viscosity is the air equivalent to friction. Friction is a force that resists the movement between two adjacent objects. Similarly, if we imagine air being broken into layers, viscosity is a measure of the resistance of movement between two layers of air. For example, if we have two layers of air, one that's moving and one that isn't, viscosity will cause the moving air to slow down and the stopped air to speed up, so both layers are moving at the same speed. A viscous force, then, is a measure of how much a moving object wants to cause the air around it to move at the same speed as that object. In other words, how much air sticks to the object. The greater the viscous force, the more air sticks to an object, such as a wing. We can calculate the force associated with viscosity from the equation force, F sub V, is equal to the viscosity, mu, times the velocity, V, times the area, a sub v, divided by the distance, z. In this case, the velocity is the speed of the moving layer of air, while a sub v is the area of that layer of air. In the case of aircraft, the area of the air layer is the area of the top part of the wing. The distance z, then, is the distance between two layers of air because the layers do have some thickness. They aren't infinitely thin. In the case of aircraft, z is the height of the boundary layer. I won't go too in-depth on that, but it is essentially the length from the wing to where air flows normally, i.e. the distance it takes for air to not be affected by the wing. Don't worry too much about the boundary layer specifically, just know it's a length above the wing. 
Now that we know what inertial and viscous forces are, we can get back to the Reynolds number. In the case of aircraft, viscous and inertial forces are essentially opposites. Viscous forces want to keep the air flow stuck to the wing, while inertial forces want to cause the air to bounce off the wing and keep going, not spending much time near the wing at all. Reynolds' number is the inertial forces divided by the viscous forces. This measures how big the inertial forces are compared to the viscous ones. As such, at low Reynolds number, viscous forces dominate, and the air sticks to the surface of the wing. This is termed laminar flow. At high Reynolds numbers, inertial forces take over, and airflow tends to separate from the wing. In other words, at high Reynolds numbers, the air hits the wing, but just continues on along its path. This type of airflow is termed turbulent flow. For turbulent flow, vortices are created from a combination of the viscous and inertial forces. Air that is touching the wing sticks to the wing and thus doesn't want to keep moving, while air a bit farther away from the wing wants to just keep going. This difference in speed causes the air to start swirling, creating a bunch of small vortices. These vortices make the air unstable, which in turn makes it hard for the wings to generate lift. This is why turbulence causes an airplane to shake, and also why it is best to avoid it. We can calculate Reynolds' number by dividing our inertial force equation by our viscous force equation. In doing that, we have rho times v squared times a sub i times z divided by 2 times mu times v times a sub v. One of our velocities on the top and bottom cancel. We can also cancel our two areas, but this requires a bit of discussion. If you remember from earlier, these two areas were not of the same thing. The inertial force area, a sub i, was the area of the front of the wing, while the viscous force area, a sub v, was the area of the top of the wing. Since Reynolds number is a ratio, and these are reference areas, we can rotate one of the forces, by convention the viscous force, so the areas are of the same thing, which means they cancel directly. In the rotation of the viscous force, we also rotate the distance z. So now, it is of arbitrary length, going along the width of the wing. The specific length we choose here doesn't matter, we just need to keep it consistent for any given wing. As such, we set z equal to 2 times the width of the wing. The width of the wing is termed the chord length, so we use the variable c for this. Furthermore, since we have a 2 in the numerator now, we can get rid of the 1 half, which is why it was 2 times c. In the end, after cancelling everything, we get Reynolds' number is equal to the air density, rho, times the velocity, v, times the chord length, c, divided by the air viscosity, mu. Note that since we divided a force by a force, Reynolds' number is unitless. Nevertheless, hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something, and see ya.